Okay. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, the technical community event uh, featuring uh, Horizon Cloud Technical Community event organized by Hub for Cloud Project uh, featuring the project Serrano. And uh, I welcome you all. This uh, could be our Hub for Cloud Project's uh, one of the last uh, technical community events, but not to um, you know, shock you or give you any setbacks. Um, I have also mentioned previously in my uh, communication in the task force calls and things like that, that the uh, Huffer Cloud project is ending, but the initiative uh, discontinues in another, uh, you know, joint initiative uh, with cloud edge and IoT uh, communities coming together. So uh, regardless of uh, who is the main organizer, but uh, things like this and events like these uh, will continue in the future also. And I would, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we can vouch that the support for the RIAs in the community will, will continue and we will uh, keep on uh, organizing events. So uh, yes, uh, we have in the past organized these technical events, uh, you know, uh, featuring the RIAs uh, from the community. And this is now Serrano. Uh, one of the ICT40 projects, and uh, they are going to present their uh, platform uh, in depth today. Uh, so uh, like some housekeeping rules here, the workshop will be recorded. Uh, and then uh, I ask all the participants to keep your uh, microphones on mute at all times and uh, your uh, uh, camera also uh, closed, the videos off, turned off, except the speaker when they are talking, uh, when they are while they're presenting, I, just, I, um, I request only the speakers to turn their uh, cameras on, but while there are questions and discussions, of course, uh, please turn it on. Uh, and uh, then here is the, a very short agenda that we will uh, start uh, uh, straight away. Uh, uh, my colleague Panayotis Kokinos from uh, uh, the NTUA uh, University in Athens, he will uh, start, he will give an introduction to the project and then uh, the colleagues from the Serrano project, uh, they will uh, give a deep dive, uh, deep dive on the technology and the platform. So um, uh, this is uh, the consortium, Hub for, uh, Hub for Cloud Consortium, we are from Artel Innovate and uh, Technalia, Athos Technalia Ventures are partners. Uh, thank you very much for your attention during, uh, you know, during the event when we start, then I will be sharing in the chat, uh, I will share with you the uh, credentials, Twitter and uh, uh, the handles, Twitter and LinkedIn, just in case if you want to uh, share or follow, uh, we are very happy. And uh, okay, without uh, waiting much, uh, I stop sharing my screen now and uh, Panayotis. Yes, now I'm sharing my screen. Just a minute. So you can see my screen now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the Hub for Cloud and Amrita uh, for uh, hosting us in this event. Uh, so we will be able to present a little bit about uh, the Serrano uh, and provide, provide some of the innovations that take place uh, in the project. So I, I will give a brief overview of the of the Serrano project. I'm from uh, the systems of the Panayotis, sorry, I think there is some problem with the mic. Your voice goes down. Uh, we can't okay, hear okay. you. Yes, if you come a bit closer. Oh, to okay, the okay, yes. okay, 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 okay. This, this is more. Now is better. Okay, so I am Panayotis Kokinos from the Institute of Communication Computer Systems from the National Technical University of Athens. And I will present some information about the Serrano project. So the Serrano project, the full name is uh, Transparent Application Development in a Secure, Accelerated and Cognitive Cloud Continuum. It is a project that was uh, accepted in the ICT 4020 call of the EU Cloud Computing towards a Smart Cloud Computing Continuum. It's a research innovation action. Uh, and the duration is 30, 36 months, starting from uh, January of uh, 2021 till uh, the December of 2023. So the Serrano has 11 partners, 
five research institutes, uh, ICCS, University of Stuttgart, University of Thessaloniki, uh, UVT, uh, IDECO, uh, UVT is the from uh, West University of Timarosa, uh, SMEs, a number of SMEs like uh, Chocolate Cloud, InvestMe, Innovax, Nubificus, uh, two industrial partners, Mellanox and Nitracom, Indrasoft. Uh, also, well, the partners have several roles. So we have partners that are experts on edge acceleration and security. We have partners that are experts on application profiling, high performance computing, resource orchestration and telemetry, and partners that are experts on integration and use cases. And of course, that relate uh, come from various European uh, countries. Uh, the motivation, so the motivation uh, behind the, uh, the Serrano project, generally, till recently, we were based on uh, Sorry for that. Uh, so the uh, the motivation behind the, the the Serrano project was that we have a several uh, cloud computing resources that usually handle the processing and the storage uh, requirements coming from uh, monolithic applications. Of course, this model changes. So we have applications now that are very dynamic. They are composed of several microservices. Uh, their requirements are very strict. Uh, in order to address some of these applications, we have uh, edge computing as a new computing paradigm the, the, the last few years. That the goal is to bring computation close to the data sources. So we have edges that are operate on device or edge computing that operates very close to the end devices. The challenge, of course, in the edge computing is that we don't have a single type of uh, computing resource. So we don't have a machine that has a CPU. Uh, we have different types of uh, hardware resources. We have CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, ASICs, uh, various storage nodes that can, that can be used as uh, computing edge nodes. And so here is where uh, the Serrano uh, comes in and the vision is to provide disaggregated and federated infrastructures consisting of edge cloud and also of edge PC resources, so also very important. And the, in order to achieve this, we built what we call the Serrano platform. We have three uh, basic uh, uh, layers, let's say, that we focus on. We focus on, on building an abstraction layer. The idea of the abstraction layer is that Though we may have different types of resources, as we said, edge, cloud, HPC, the idea of this layer is to automate the uh, application deployment and making easy, make it easy for the developer to develop applications and without considering so much about the infrastructure, develop applications in an uh, infrastructure agnostic manner, as we say. The other part, uh, of this, uh, the, the core part, of course, the Serrano platform itself, that it has, a, it operates in a closed loop operation, as far as a closed loop model of operation, where it, it always adapts the infrastructure, it observes the infrastructure, it decides how to optimize the infrastructure and optimize the infrastructure. And the second, let's say, pillar of uh, focus of uh, the Serrano is that the platform enables a number of services, infrastructure services, platform services, software services that can um, assist the European market on uh, edge, cloud, and, and uh, HPC. The Serrano, I, along this platform, introduced a number of innovations, some of which we will, uh, uh, they will be discussed in more detail by partners uh, for the, in the presentations that follow. Some of these innovations had to do with uh, hardware and software platforms for enhanced security and privacy, had to do with hardware acceleration, approximation computing, with workload isolation, execution trust on untrusted resources, and with intelligence services and resource registration. Serrano has three use cases. The first is a secure storage use case, where the goal is to provide secure and high performance storage at the edge. And here, the Serrano 
integrates with a multi cloud, the Serrano platform integrates with a multi cloud storage service, extending this service to the edge. Another use case is the high performance fintech analysis, where uh, the goal is to apply uh, AI, NML, uh, and ML algorithms in financial operations. And here, the Serrano platform and the Serrano enabled infrastructure will provide security and intelligence in the fintech application deployment. And also, we have a machine anomaly detection in manufacturing environments where the, the goal is to detect anomalies in machines operating inside the industries in real time. Instead of you know, turning off the machine, evaluating and entering it on, the idea is to do this on real time. And here again, the Serrano platform and the Serrano enabled infrastructure will assist in orchestrating related computations and related data storage operations in data coming from uh, high frequency sensors operating in the machines. The Serrano has a number of objectives, six, six objectives. The intent driven to define the intent driven paradigm of federated infrastructures, to develop security and privacy mechanisms for accelerated encrypted storage, to provide workload isolation execution trust, provide acceleration and energy efficiency in the cloud and the edge, to provide cognitive resource orchestration and a transparent application deployment, and to demonstrate the developments in these use cases that we mentioned. Through the achievements of these objectives, several developments take place. Uh, the, the project is in, in, it's in a month 20, so we are around the half of the project. So a number, ma many components have been developed, many developments took place, many innovations. So. Some of these are, are discussed here. We define the Serrano multi-layer architecture, of course. We utilize data processing units for secure storage acceleration. We implement the Serrano and Hay storage service for secure storage in the edge. We utilize measurable techniques and develop a lightweight hypervisor to support various tiers of security in the edge and in the cloud. We develop hardware and software accelerated kernels that utilize the approximation techniques. And these kernels are developed both for the cloud and for the edge and for the HPC. And also we develop several tools and frameworks that assist in the development of applications that run on FPGAs and GPUs. And also we develop this abstraction layer that uh, assist in uh, the deploying applications. We develop registration mechanisms, orchestration mechanisms, monitoring mechanisms, and service assurance mechanisms. So this is the current architecture of the Serrano. Uh, I won't go in much detail. We have several components. We have identified the interfaces. We have various layers, the service layer, the orchestration layer, the secure data layer, the infrastructure abstraction layer, and the resource layer. And this components implement this function of described here. So we have the applications. We have the AI and his service orchestrator that translates the, the abstract requirements of the applications in detailed infrastructure aware requirements. And we have then the resource orchestrator and the service assurance component and the monitoring component that makes sure that the applications are deployed in the right resources and that in case something happens with this, this infrastructure and the way applications are deployed is adapted. And in the lower layer, we have the various resources that are Serrano enabled resources in the edge, in the cloud, and in the HPC. That is a very short presentation of the Serrano. In the YouTube, you can find the describes uh, abstractly of course the Serrano project. And that's all. Thank you for uh, for uh, the presentation, for, for listening. Uh, this is our website. Uh, please connect with us in our social media to follow our posts and our and our progress. And uh, I will be happy to ask any questions that you may have for the Serrano project. In case there are no more questions, I see I don't see any questions on the chat. Then I would request the next speaker to uh, uh, start sharing their screen. Yes, I'm coming up. 
Let me see if I can match. Hi, Juan. Hi. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, it's, the, the bottom is so obvious that I, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's uh, in the middle, the green. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, let me know. Yes, yes. We see it in full thing. screen now. Okay. Um, whoop. Yes. Great. Um, so first of all, so I would like to join a, 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 my thank you for, for inviting us to expose a little bit more what we are doing in this project. Um, the talk is Transparent Application Deployment in Secure, Accelerated and Cognitive Cloud Continuum. So this is uh, JJ Vegas almost speaking. Uh, and this is work that it's been done uh, in our team and it would not be fair if I would not mention the people that are driving it technically, Yura Isaac, Boris Pismeni, and Liran Liz. Um, when I prepared that presentation, I thought, okay, it's been almost two years and a half of COVID and lots of webinars and lots of uh, remote calls. So I thought that it was perhaps nice to try something else which is uh, make the presentation in a reverse order. So I might just perhaps uh, make you fall from the, from the chair. I might make you fall asleep. But what I have done is to make the presentation and I just put all the slides upside down. So I will start with the conclusions. I will show you the results, then the proposal and the setup, the architecture, and then I will conclude with the introduction. I hope it's fine with you. So let me start with the, with the conclusions. So AI is a, is a driver for cloud, edge, deep edge, and its continuum. And AI, it's not only processing, it's not only networking, it's uh, basically about accelerated computing. To enable this accelerated computing, uh, you need to offload and accelerate. And in this work, in these slides, uh, we're gonna be showing how offloading acceleration shows a tangible gain in TLS connections. So I will show you that uh, basically data is encrypted uh, on the go and that there is a 41% improvement on CPU utilization, which means that you can take your CPU and dedicate it for purposes that are better suited for CPU. And then a 9% increase on the available bandwidth. So let's start with the results. Um, this is the results that we have obtained for the experiment that I have not yet shown you. And in here, you can see a comparison of, um, of the performance of a network interface card when you are establishing TLS connections at kernel level, meaning that you are establishing an end-to-end -end encrypted connection between two points uh, using secure tunneling, and you, are using, and you are doing that or implementing that at CPU level, compared to when you are taking this TLS um, connection and you are offloading some of the encryption into hardware. So you can see that the CPU utilization in that case moved down from 32% to 19%. So there's an improvement of 41%. And the total transfer in our network interface cards that we were using uh, for these experiments was 100, 100 gigabits. So you can see that when we are implementing the TLS on, um, on kernel, uh, we get a, an available bandwidth of 89 gigabits, but when we are offloading, we can get 97 gigabits, which is almost full line rate. And this is, by the way, happening real time. So meaning that almost no latency and the data is encrypted as it goes. So you can see that also there is a gain in, in latency, but at 100 gigabits per second, and that's very relevant. So how did we obtain these results? This is the setup that uh, we are using. So basically we have uh, two servers. One of them is a workload generator providing data at 100 gig. So different type of uh, profile, uh, profile data transfer requests. And all of them have encrypted data and that encrypted data goes through a network interface card at 100 gig. It's connected with an optical fiber to another network interface card. And then at that server, we implement both the kernel TLS and then the offloaded uh, TLS. And then we benchmark the results. The setup for this, uh, 
uh, for this uh, for this experiment it's pretty much off the shelf meaning that we are not using anything that you cannot buy on the open market so this is two servers with amd processors connect x and uh, network interface cards standing operating system the server configuration is open on the github and the https client it's also a benchmark tool that it's available on the on the on the on the, on the network so everything it's out there for you to check in case that you want to implement but are we, what are we exactly checking or what are we exactly testing so what we are testing is basically the acceleration of the tls the transport layer security from the kernel to the hardware and what does it mean that traditionally when you are generating data um, and here on the on the left hand side you would have the baseline meaning when you have kernel tls with regular encryption normally what you do is that at cpu level somewhere in between uh, the tls and the tcp ip you are encrypting your data and you are doing that using cpu cycles and then you push down those packets to the network interface car which will interface with the network when we're doing the offload uh, what we are trying is uh, instead of encrypting the data when it's at the TCP IP layer or when it reaches the NIC, it's basically uh, offload that to a dedicated uh, CPU processor, which is, means that in this case, we, we are accelerating through offloading, by the way, because we are transferring from one CPU to another CPU. Uh, but that CPU is dedicated only for that purpose and it's architecture only for that purpose. And that Encryption happens when it's at the network interface card just before you are reaching the network. Why this acceleration, uh, this hardware acceleration is needed or where it's needed? So this is one of the use cases that we are working in uh, Serrano, and this is in close collaboration with a company called Chocolate Cloud. And Chocolate Cloud has a very simple uh, and very valuable uh, proposition. What they are saying is we offer you a, an interface where you can set up which is the level of GDPR compliance that you want in the data that you are storing. Uh, you can actually also figure out which geographic locations you want your data to be stored. And whatever you are storing through our application, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be splitting it in portions and we will geographically, in a geographically diverse manner, store pieces of your data so in case that one of the pieces is intercepted you still have the assurance that the rest of the data is not intercepted because it's elsewhere physically and therefore your data has an extra layer of protection so you can see here uh, a little bit of a uh, high level uh, um, organigram of how that would be where basically you have an on-premise store gateway that takes care of the splitting and of course, some of the data might go to locations where you don't have Serrano H devices. And in this case, for instance, uh, there are places in uh, Finland, Norway, and Sweden for diff with different providers. But there will be also places where you have actually these Serrano H devices, which is NVIDIA network interface cards that can actually implement that acceleration. So this is one use case that we are working. In general, actually, um, if you take one step back and look at the, at the network, the reason why we need hardware accelerations is because most of the processes that we are needing nowadays are uh, repetitive in nature. So current networks are no more and no less than big input output black holes. So you are constantly making write and read requests. You are sending data toward processing storage. And then you are actually retrieving that data for further processing and storage and processing it and store it elsewhere. So there is a lot of back and forth. And that's basically one of the big bottlenecks in current performance for networks. Uh, in particular, artificial intelligence and machine learning are really great examples. Either you are training a neural network or you are conducting inference. Basically, this is all a game or an exercise of input output sending data around. So when you have when you are repeating something many, many times, you tend to be much better off offloading or accelerating those functions. And in network, that means accelerating or offloading uh, IPsec, TLS, MacSec, all these layers that are there that normally are taken care of by the CPU. So the network operations become really, really critical. And if you want to minimize the latency, which means that you might have a better user experience, you really need 
to make your network transparent. And making your network transparent nowadays, it means that you are accelerating it, some of the factions. Uh, but how does this network looks like? Uh, the next slide, it's a little bit heavy. I'm sorry, I think I double push. No, I think it's fine. Um, use cases, they really traverse. Nowadays, I don't think there is any use case that it's uh, or any big area that it's particularly claiming the or putting the flag on having ownership of the network. I think there are many use cases out there speech, uh, healthcare, manufacturing, finance, uh, weather forecasting, seismic mapping, anything you can imagine. So how the network looks like? Well, on one hand, you have the uh, proprietary software, which provides you toolkits for some of these use cases. And most of these toolkits are operating on GPU accelerated uh, platforms. Uh, then those are on cloud deployments. Uh, and in here, we, when I'm saying cloud, I'm already including Edge. I think in a way, Edge, it's becoming a little bit of the new cloud, smaller, more dynamic, agile, closer to the end user, but still how they are configured, it's very similar. And the general idea is that you see your system as, a, as you see a platform as a service or software as a service. So you no longer start looking at what's the underlying technology. And I'll give you a very, Silly example, for many, many years, many of the use cases were running on telecom or uh, datacom networks. So in there, inevitably, you would go to the incumbent operator and you will always interface your network through the eyes of a telco operator. Nowadays, that's no longer true. You basically, you have your use cases, you have your toolkits for deploying your solutions, and you no longer care what's underneath. So your expectation is that your software will take care of handling what's underneath. And you don't really need to know anything about Ethernet, InfiniBand, type of memories, type of processors, and so on. So that leads to a situation in which, if you think about it, basically, uh, what you are doing is like in your mobile phone in Android. You no longer care to know how Android works. Basically, you just know that you have apps. And you can download your apps and run your an Android. So here it's a little bit the same. You have a network and you don't care how the network looks like in terms of fabric. What you are doing is just downloading apps that provide you solutions for your specific use case. And that might be uh, apps on video analytics, on robotics, on digital twins, on uh, simulations. And those might work also in conjunction with uh, tools and frameworks that are more dedicated for AI and data science. And that basically is what the developer of the 21st century is going to be seeing. It's going to be seeing a set of application frameworks and tool and development frameworks, not really what's underneath. That also means that the cloud and the edge are now merging. And that's my reference to my previous point, that when, when I say cloud, I might also include the edge. Of course, you're going to have a, a cloud that is extremely diverse. You're going to have on-premise solutions with equipment that is located next to your to the people that is fabricating those needs, colocation, cloud, hybrid, multi-cloud, edge. And the point being is that the users want to continue on what uh, for an engineer and architect is not. So if you look at if you ask an engineer and architect what's the edge and what's the cloud, they are going to be finding strong differences or what's on-premise, right? But for the user, which ultimately is whoever is driving the application, that's a full continuum. You no longer care how your network is underneath. You want maximum flexibility. You want to develop once and deploy it anywhere. You want to drive consistency to minimize support costs. You don't want to worry about whether the location of your, um, of your data or your app makes you need some specific solutions. Uh, everything the developer needs to know, it's a uh, built end-to-end -end AI solutions in one location. It's optimized for the best performance. So basically fighting for performance from the application perspective, it's not a point in terms of networking performance or computing performance. And that the software catalog is portable. So there is no cloud platform lock-in. So you no longer want to develop an application that works on a certain provider. And then what happens if in two years time you have to move it elsewhere uh, do you need to reinvent it from scratch? That's no longer the case. All this is happening basically, as I mentioned, because we are adopting AI. And, and that adoption is happening from end users, from, uh, from uh, verticals 
that again are not native to telecom, are not native to datacom, and as such they are developing their uh, solutions disconnected from the infrastructure. They just want to do something that they can move around. And here are some highlights. Uh, I know they might be a little bit cheesy because they are the standard ones, everything about self-driving uh, cars, uh, factory 4.0, robotics, uh, healthcare, even smart manufacturing and smart agriculture is coming up and everything related to cloud. So AI is transversal to many industries and basically the adoption is accelerating. It's not going to decrease. This is the, the big driver for the, for the next 10 years. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentations. Many thanks for your attention. I hope it was not too weird to make it the other way around, but definitely you might remember this talk. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. I invite questions now. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, there was one question uh, before you started presenting, maybe uh, before you started presenting. So maybe this is uh, probably for uh, uh, Panayot this, but uh, I'll just uh, put it here anyway. What are the issues you have faced on this framework? So uh, either uh, you, Jose, or uh, uh, Panayotis, if you want uh, to address this. I think this was right after your present, the first presentation. Yes. Uh, by the term framework, I suppose uh, uh, we refer to the platform of the Serrano. Uh, if, it, if this is the case, then uh, well, as I said, we are in the middle of the project uh, currently. We are developing the components, and now we are we have developed most of the components of the Serrano platform. Now we are working towards the integration. Uh, the challenges I think ahead us is uh, in one hand to to achieve the integration of the various technologies that that we that uh, operate uh, in the Serrano. I think by the way we have defined the architecture and the interfaces. I think we will achieve this quite well. Uh, another challenge is about uh, making the use cases that we have actually uh, maximizing the benefits that they can get from the Serrano platform. Again, this is a challenge, but uh, we have carefully, for example, one thing that we have done, we have carefully designed early on what uh, um, uh, uh, code, let's say, in a very abstract way from the use cases will be accelerated. One thing we have done, we, we have accelerated code both in FPGAs, in GPUs, in HPC, using approximation computing techniques that will, uh, our colleague will present next, I suppose, uh, considering the code that uh, functions, let's say, that the use cases require. So we have taken some consideration about the use cases early on, but again, again, it's a challenge so as to make the use cases uh, really benefit from the security aspects, from the acceleration aspects, from the storage aspects, from the edge, and from the federation of the different resources that we have. Uh, so this is a challenge. Another challenge, of course, is the, the, the abstraction. In order, uh, one of the key points of the Serrano is to provide an abstraction layer, as we call it, making easy for application deployment in an infrastructure agnostic manner. This is a challenge. Um, uh, for example, uh, it's a challenge because how an infrastructure ag agnostic manner is defined. So it is a challenge, but an, all these are things that we are looking at. I think we, we work on it, and I think it's a very challenges that also uh, lead to innovations. So uh, I, I think we are on a good uh, track. Uh, thank you, Panayotis. I have a few more questions. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, I, I request all the speakers, you know, whoever can answer. So there is a question from Philip, Philip Grief from Eclipse Foundation. And uh, he wants to know about the exploitation strategy and about the open source uh, uh, strategies. So uh, can you please answer that? And then there are, uh, I think, one more questions, but uh, yeah. And then we go to the next presentation. So the exploitation strategy and open source. Uh, regarding the exploitation strategy, uh, we are working, we follow a, a several iteration procedure about identifying what can be exploited. Uh, we had partners discussing what from their products can be exploited. We are now at the second phase of the iteration, uh, discussing how the, the various developments to progress and 
to reaffirm which companies will be will be exploited. So it's an ongoing process. All partners have components that can be exploited in isolation, but of course the Serrano platform as a whole can also be exploited. But uh, so we work in this direction, both as a whole, the Serrano platform, and 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 the developments that separate partners uh, perform. Regarding uh, the open source, again, the, the procedure is the same. I mean, there are components from partners that are uh, open source, and uh, the developments uh, that they took, that they, they, they perform in the context of the Serrano platform, uh, so they will enhance these open source repositories. Uh, there are code which is not open source. Um, but generally, of course, speaking, we, we are heavily using open source projects inside the Serrano. Uh, like uh, Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, uh, NetData. So we are, we are using and extending this open source project to some aspects. And of course, these aspects will be again be open source. Will be open source. Can I interrupt? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I have two more questions, but we are also running out of time. I will, uh, I will give only uh, Panayotis five minutes more and then we have to start the next presentation. Okay, so next question from uh, my own colleague here, Giacomo, and he has read, uh, said, uh, apart from improvement presented, do you have any information on the electrical consumption? Is there a benefit by using hardware offloading? And then he also says that, uh, by the way, there are great improvements and very interesting use cases. So very shortly, please, anybody. Uh, I think an uh, Dimitri, Dimitrios in the next presentation, uh, to some extent, we'll talk probably about electrical subs. I don't know if JJ wants to add something here, but I think Dimitrios will, I, will respond to it. I have, I have two, two very quick uh, punchlines. Um, open source, from our from our side, most of our software developments uh, are actually uh, available on GitHub. So if you're a programmer or developer, you can go there, you can grab it. Some of them, it's open source fully 100%. Some other, it's a soft license. So you can play with it, investigate it. And then if there is something you want to change, you, you, you can enter into an agreement with that. Uh, electrical consumption. I would like to want to give one step back. Uh, we are moving from precisely uh, network components that are not so smart and not programmable to adding uh, programmability and smartness to the, to the network components. And that allows you actually to start using a power consumption as an element to define how your network operates. So the moments that you have, for instance, a reconfigurable data plane, then you can configure it using a power consumption as an input to parameter to how you actually want to, to, uh, to interlink that layer. And that's something that in the past it didn't happen. In the past, you just put the network interface card, it would consume as many watts, and it didn't matter what you did with it, it would be always consuming that amount. But now by adding intelligence, you can actually play with that. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jose. And now the last question from Marco, Marco Di Girolamo. And uh, are you investigating about a potential business model to attract the infrastructure providers, regardless if cloud or edge, and give them rationale? Rationale to federate and share their resources. Uh, I suppose the, the initiative uh, for infrastructure providers is to showcase that uh, we can achieve uh, the, these federations that we are trying to do in the Serrano. Um, and, but, uh, and so this is, I think, part of part uh, for uh, an answer, a partial answer at least to this question. For sharing the resources, uh, I think the edge computing is by nature a, 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 a computing paradigm that requires sharing. So it cannot work without sharing. We have um, in the Serrano, we develop multi-tendency mechanisms that are exactly there to provide this, uh, the capability to, to host application the same resources in a secure manner. So federation and sharing is, is, is a key and necessary for edge computing to work. And, the, and this is why we investigate this aspect also. Thank you, Panayotis. Uh, I really thank the questions. Uh, and I would really quickly now ask uh, the last speaker, Dimitrios, to start his presentation. I think uh, you know we should finish uh, uh, in one hour, like not, not so uh, by three o'clock, we should try to finish. Uh, 
And okay. uh, uh, I also request the speakers to drop in your uh, contacts if you want to be contacted. I mean, this is a community event. You know, you might be knowing most of the people here, each other. So drop in your contact just so that people can get in touch uh, with you again if they have more questions or anything like that. So Dimitrios, please start okay. sharing your I screen. cannot start uh, right now because uh, I think uh, JJ has to close. Okay. Um... Let me share. I think screen. you stopped sharing. You can. Okay. Now. I think yes. you can you can see my screen, right? Mm, yes, but not in full screen yet. Yeah. 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 Okay. So thank you first for inviting us to this event to present our work uh, of Serrano. Uh, I'm Dimitri Danopoulos uh, from Aristotelian, Aristotelian University of Thessaloniki, Greece. Um, I'm a machine learning and hardware engineer, and I work in the AUTH team, research team of the project. Uh, so, basically, our goal in uh, Serrano as AUTH University is to deliver a platform for uh, both um, cloud edge and HPC workload acceleration. Uh, and these are the steps that we follow. First, we optimize um, the applications given. Uh, from the use case partners. Um, so the appropriate hardware kernels need to be developed. Uh, then we apply approximate uh, or transprecision computing techniques, uh, which provide a workload aware uh, trade off between performance or power. Uh, and next, uh, we also faci facilitate uh, the development of these uh, hardware accelerators using automated frameworks. Uh, and last, we enable hardware acceleration of short lead tasks. This is the hardware infrastructure that we use. Uh, as you can see, there is a variety of um, uh, hardware accelerators spanning from the edge and cloud devices, uh, both for FPGA and uh, GPU architecture, uh, such as the Alveo family for FPGAs, or the NVIDIA T4 uh, GPU on the cloud, or the Xavier on the edge. Uh, and each uh, device has its own hardware characteristics uh, with a different uh, acceleration potential, uh, depending on the application, of course. So the first goal of um, AUTH in Serrano, as mentioned uh, earlier, is to enable uh, hardware acceleration on computationally intensive tasks, and then uh, deliver a repository, a kernel, repository of these hardware accelerated uh, kernels. Um, the methodology uh, can be seen below. Uh, first, we uh, identify the intensive regions of these uh, applications, the computational intensive tasks, uh, and use high-level synthesis uh, for FPGA development um, and, CUDA, and the CUDA programming language for the GPU. Uh, kernel development. Um, so this is the methodology uh, in this illustration, can be seen more clearly. We have the application code written in Python or C++. Then we identify the compute intensive regions and create the C++ equivalent code of the target functions. Then there is uh, there are two flows, the FPGA development flow and the GPU development flow. Uh, in the FPGA, we apply optimization pragmas uh, through the HLS compiler, and uh, the, with the GPU flow, we, we apply some block coarsening techniques and some other optimizations using the NVCC compiler. And in both um, flows, we apply, we introduce also approximations uh, regarding power, performance, delay, trade-offs. And at last, we have the binaries of each device, which is linked, uh, which are linked with the application executable. And last, uh, we have the we containerize the applications and uh, upload them to a kernel uh, to Docker library. Um, this is the general idea. Uh, so um, these are uh, the uh, the kernels uh, that are that the use case providers have given to us at least three compute intensive algorithms we identified. Uh, some, some of the kernels might be familiar to you like AES encryption, uh, Kalman filter or uh, K-means or Black Souls. Um, 
So these are some uh, results from its uh, use case partner. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, you, you can clearly observe the energy gains uh, from the application execution uh, through the hardware devices. Uh, for example, we can see uh, 24x speed up from the AES encryption or 2030x from the eraser coding or 150x from the Kalman filtering. Uh, and these are taken from the execution on the FPGA on the Xilinx Alva U50 compared with a typical Xeon uh, CPU, the Intel Xeon Gold. Um, okay, uh, next um, we, have, we applied some uh, transprecision or approximate techniques uh, which tackled challenges like uh, limited storage or uh, computation capabilities. Uh, for example, loop, perfor loop uh, perforation, um, which reduces the total workload uh, of the kernel uh, by skipping um, by skipping iterations, basically of the loop by specific strides. Uh, you can observe here the gains uh, of the execution time by using bigger and bigger strides. Um, but, however, on the specific application of Kalman filter. Uh, as we increase the perforation stride, uh, the error the error also rises. So you have to find the optimal trade-off between these two. And these are some more results. Uh, you can see the speed up in the performance, 7x, on the energy consumption, 6x. Uh, but uh, the error increases, as uh, I already mentioned. Um, OK. Um, now another approximate techniques uh, technique uh, is uh, precision scaling. Uh, basically, with this technique, uh, we don't uh, use the typical floating point 32 bits arithmetic, but use a lower precision arithmetic. Uh, and this way, we achieved in the Kalman filter, for example, 65x speed up or 51x decrease in energy. Uh, you can see below, although uh, if we increase the bits which is higher, higher SNR. So you have, again, to find the nice trade-off between SNR, signal-to-noise ratio, and uh, the performance, the performance increase. Um, uh, OK, this, uh, the next step that we follow um, is develop some uh, tools, basically, uh, for automated um, application development. Uh, first is the plug and chip uh, framework, which is an automated framework uh, that optimizes uh, optimally HLS and CUDA kernels, and the DMM for FPGA framework, uh, which basically enables uh, a more efficient uh, solution of the sharing of the FPGA devices between different kernels. And then on the development phase, um, when, for example, a Serrano user wants to execute a kernel with a specific performance or power requirements, uh, the Serrano orchestration mechanism deploy uh, the optimal solution according to these constraints. So I will briefly describe its uh, framework. Uh, first, the plugin chip, um, which provides a methodology that performs DSE, Design Space Exploration, without any human intervention, uh, by leveraging basically the power of uh, genetic algorithms. Uh, users, designers, basically, with zero hardware knowledge can utilize uh, this, this tool uh, to accelerate their applications through FPGAs. The tool also provides um, different uh, flavors of the produced kernels to choose from. And also uh, the parameters that takes into account, uh, the, the tool takes into account, include latency, resources, uh, or power, power consumption. So this is the illustration of the methodology. Uh, as the first step uh, in its generation of the genetic algorithm, uh, it creates a set of configurations and directives, and optimization directives. As the second step, uh, the source-to-source -source compiler uh, applies uh, the, these optimization directives to the C or C++ kernel. 
and then the Vite is uh, HLS compiler, uh, which is the compiler for FPGAs, provides an estimation uh, of the kernel latency, resources, or power uh, for its configuration of the generation. And then this information is given as input to the generator algorithm to create configurations of the next uh, generation. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, um, some results from this tool. Um, in general, um, sorry, yes, uh, you can uh, uh, observe the 26% lower latency compared uh, to our version, which is an optimized uh, kernel version. And this is without human intervention. Uh, and the results are even better when we compare it with a naive uh, accelerator, not ours, a naive approach. So these results are very important uh, because also are, are, are taken from the Kalman filter, which is a use case provider application. Uh, and this showed the efficiency of uh, the tool. Uh, next. I will describe uh, briefly uh, the second part of um, the plugin chip framework, uh, which has to do with the cross architectural GPU kernel auto tuning. Uh, here we we aimed for a kernel and device aware optimization methodology for CUDA kernels, uh, and on top of that we applied block coarsening transformations on these kernels and enabled eventually a more efficient GPU utilization overall. Uh, this is the illustration of this tool. Um, again, we have the C++ input, uh, then the NVIDIA compiler along with the kernel static pictures are inserted uh, into an ML model based on XGBoost library. Uh, then after training the model, uh, the framework can provide optimal uh, block coarsening factors in new kernels, uh, along with the final uh, source code with the coarsened uh, versions. Um, and these are some results from the tool. Uh, you can see 2.7x uh, speed up on the application of uh, GEM, General Matrix Multiplication, uh, compared with a naive, with a native kernel execution. And this is again without any human intervention. Uh, also, you can see general in general here, the tool achieved a good uh, generalization between new kernels um, as well as new unseen GPUs. So we generalize this tool to new kernels and new GPUs. And last, uh, the last part of our tools, it is the DMM for FPGA framework. Uh, this, tool, this framework basically enables the, uh, the on-chip FPGA uh, memory sharing uh, among many kernels. Um, this increases, increases the accelerator's density uh, and eventually uh, the achievable throughput and also eliminates the reprogramming time. Um, the methodology is the following. Um, first, we synthesize uh, heap structures using the FPGA memory, uh, create malloc commands from synthesizable code. Uh, we perform Monte Carlo analysis to, to determine uh, the collocation scenarios, uh, the possible collocation scenarios, for example, in which uh, we observe no fra fragmentation. Um, and last, uh, determine uh, the Pareto of possible solutions uh, that are based uh, on the trade-offs between performance or memory efficiency. Uh, and these are some results from the from the DMM for FPGA tool. Uh, we evaluated on three uh, accelerators: uh, histogram, 2D matrix multiplication, um, and PCA analysis. Uh, we saw up to six x increase uh, on the accelerator density. Um, also, in the use case of uh, use case application of uh, erasure coding, um, we saw that uh, instantiating uh, one heap uh, and sharing the heaps on chip memories among the implemented uh, accelerators uh, led to an increase of up to 14x 
uh, compared to the typical uh, static allocation scheme. Uh, also, the increase is dependent on the number of the synth synthesized hips, uh, and more hips led to better performance overall per acceler accelerator, uh, but a smaller increase in accelerator density. Uh, these are the next steps that we will do as a UTH in Serrano. Uh, basically, evaluate uh, all the accelerated kernels on all the devices, both cloud and edge. Uh, containerize the kernels and push them all in a Docker registry, and also deliver these uh, tools that I mentioned, plug and chip and DMM for FPGA, as services over Kubernetes, and also use a Python uh, interface, which is more familiar for the users, to so that they can utilize it uh, more transparently. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitrios. Uh, I thank hope I was fast. <laughs> yes, we are just over three, like three o'clock now, but uh, okay. very good. We also started a bit late and there were uh, some very nice discussions. Uh, so uh, are there any more questions? I was putting some things, uh, you know, some, uh, some information on the chat here, but uh, I don't see any new question here. Uh, if anybody has a question, you know, at this moment, I would just say that, you know, uh, unmute yourself, uh, you can you can talk now. Uh, let's say just, let's stay just, you know, a few more minutes, maybe two, three more minutes. Any more questions? And then uh, otherwise we will be closing. Uh, I would ask uh, Dimitrios if you stop sharing your screen. I'm oh, sorry, you know? yes. Uh, yes. Uh... Okay. Uh, other speakers, I, I mean, please uh, turn your videos on. You know, I, I would like to, to take a, a group, you know, a, a, a picture here just for the purpose of our own, you know, social media and things like that. So uh, I don't see any questions uh, anymore here. So I put some information on the chat. Uh, which is uh, uh, about our website and social media channels. And I would like to just take this opportunity to say it again, that you know uh, our project Hopper Cloud is uh, finishing this month uh, in just uh, one or two days, uh, but uh, uh, the, the initiative continues. And in the next um, uh, a month or two, we will be putting out more content and uh, the past you know events and things like that we are uh, trying to streamline it uh, so according to topics like if there is open source and standardization topics so there will be a page on open source and standardization the past events which were on these topics there will be uh, videos from that uh, so right now on the chat i shared this uh, link to the cloud computing skills uh, development in europe and then you will find at the end of the page uh, there are uh, the videos from uh, all uh, technical community events, uh, which we did in um, in the thought, in a hindsight, that these community events uh, are deep dive into uh, the technological platform, which is also a learning, a teaching cloud computing uh, skills uh, 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 teaching for for the community. So this is the the thought. So uh, just check the website and uh, you know stay tuned to the channels and. Uh, uh, you will you will get more results. So uh, I thank so once again all the speakers and uh, the participants. Uh, thank you, thank you for joining us today. And uh, uh, thank you for okay. joining for hosting us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I I have thank one you. comment. Thank you all for a very informative webinar. Looking forward to it. Yes, <laughs> same exactly. Uh, stay tuned on the channels on the concept of standardization. Yes, it will be coming soon. Uh, there are also uh, deliverables and white papers. Uh, so uh, stay tuned on the on the channels. And uh, so the recordings will be available shortly. Uh, I will be announcing on our uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. So stay tuned. Uh, if nothing else, then we can uh, close the, the meeting now, the call now. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Panayotis. Bye -bye. Thanks, Dimitri. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye.